Okay, this is the second part of section 1.1 .1 in linear algebra, systems of linear equations. We're going to actually start off with an example, as promised. So here's a system in R2. And what we're going to do, we're going to look at the graph. We'll call it the row graph. The rows being the first equation and the second equation. Second row and first row and second row. And we're actually going to solve this geometrically. And then we'll look at it as a column graph. So I want to just start off by looking at the alternate forms. I just want to start off by looking at the first alternate form. So what we can see is these are the coefficients. This is the coefficient matrix 2, minus 1, minus 1, 3. And this x, y has been pulled out as a column matrix. And how does this work? This row times this column equals that value. So if you can see it, you can see the equation there. 2x minus y equals 0. And that same thing goes true for this. It's, it's this taking the dot product with that equals 5. And you can see minus x plus 3y equals 5. So let's graph this. We're going to graph 2 and the first line. You can see 0, 0 is a point. I just need two points. And if I write it as y equals 2x, I can plug in 1 for x and get 2. The more accurate with your graphing, the closer you can guess what your solution is and then check it. And then the second equation, I'll do in green, put it into y equals mx plus b form. So if I plug in x equals 0, this is 1, 2, get 1 and 1 third. See how it's not very accurate? So 1 third. I think I want to plug in 3. Oh, look at that. So, I mean, like I said, graphing is not accurate, but my guess is that 1, 2 is a solution. So we do need to check. So our first equation and my second equation. Yep, it's a true statement. So it is a solution. Okay, so now we're going to look at the column graph. So to remind you, the system is, so our alternate form, it's going to be x, oops, I think it was 5. So this form, by the way, both forms actually will be used. And if we go back to this one, this A is going to be our um, constant matrix for our system. We call this our unknown and this our B. So this is commonly used. This one, these are vectors. Um, so I want to graph these. So just so we can get experience here, let's graph column 1, 2, minus 1. Again, it's a vector, so think of it like this. So 1, 2, minus 1, right here, goes in that direction. And then our second one, this one, minus 1, and then 3, 1, 2, 3. Let me scooch this over. Again, this is our minus 1, 3. So minus 1, up 3. So we're looking for the linear combination of these two vectors. Let's write this out. We want a linear combination to produce the vector 0, 5. Well, we already know the solution to this. So we're going to take x equals 1 and y equals 2, the solution. And let's just look at the math. Again, we know 1. So again, that's my x and my y that I found above there. So writing it as vectors, since you know how to work with vectors. We're going to learn how to work with matrices. This is, this is the column matrix. So we know this is the constant gets distributed. So this is still just 2, negative 1. This gets distributed 2. Constants gets distributed. And when we add, we add component by component. 2 plus minus 2 is 0. And negative 1 plus 6 is 5. 
So I want us to add this geometrically. So when we add, we add head to tail. So remember, you add vectors. There's the head. We add it to the tail no matter which way it goes. And the resultant is from here to here. So this could be V, W. This is V plus W. So let's do this here. So 2, 1, 2, negative 1. That's our first one. That's my vector 2 minus 1. And continuing right here at the head, head to tail. Put the tail of that vector. We go backwards 2 and up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's where it ends. And the resultant vector is from here to there, where it starts to where it ends. And what is that? Since it's emanating from 0, 0, that is the vector 0, 5. Because it only goes up 5. Pretty cool. Do this definition. So we have our first line. Okay, so we can see here we have, this is A11, A21, A3, all the way to AM. So we have M rows and first column, second column, nth column and columns. So M linear equations, because there's M rows, and N unknowns. Rewriting it in our first form, matrix form, we call it. Again, it's AX equals B. If you remember from above, that's our main thing. Our A is our constant matrix. So our constant matrixes are this, this, these are all my constants. We just copy them in the same order. And this goes down to N. But the B, we can see, goes down to M. I also want to let you know we can write these matrices in two different ways. We can use this like this, or we can just use parentheses. Okay, and I do, I do both throughout the course. And also, not straight up and down. Okay, so we have to use... So these also have names already been saying some of them. This is our constant matrix, our coefficient matrix, same thing. This is our variable matrix, our variable vector. It is a matrix. The matrix would also be, it's our column matrix. This is our constant. This is our constant vector. And it's also a column matrix. Again, this is our A, this is our X, this X is this X equals B. I do want to point out the sizes of these. This is A. The A is an M by N matrix. Again, it's M rows, N columns. That's the order we do, row by columns. So again, M, one row, two row, M rows. One column, two columns. The columns are here, N columns. And the size of the X, it's N rows, we can see, by one column. And then our B is M rows by one column. These Ns, my inner, are the same. And this M by one turns out to be that size. Also, another thing to point out, our B1, this B1 right here, is equal to the dot product, row one, and the variable vector. So let me highlight that so you can see it. Row 1 times this variable vector, the dot product of it, should equal to B1. And if we do that, remember when we dot product, A11 times the first one, X1, plus A12 times the second one, that is just this first equation, because it's equal to B1. That's the dot product of those two. And it, so forth and so forth, except it's the second row, the 
second row times this is equal to b2. And that's our second equation right there, all the way down to m. There's another way to write this, and it's called the augmented matrix. The augmented matrix, we write A, and then we augment it with B. And here's just a note. If I say it's augmented, I can use the dotted line or not. So if I don't have a dotted line and I say it's augmented, I do suggest you put that line there because then you might think it's just a matrix. So now we're going to look at an example. Simple example, actually, though. Okay, just to remind us, we don't write it like this too often, but it can be written as columns. And then we can see, this one we can see, x times 0. We multiply that to both as 0 times y equals 3, 2. And then we can add these two. We get x plus 0, 0 plus y. And this is just x, y equals 3, 2. That's one way of doing it. We don't usually do it that way, but we want to remember that we can do it that way. The preferred method, really, is just write out those equations right here when, when you're able to dot, take the dot product of those. So it's just x, 1x plus 0y equals 3, which if I simplify that, so that's x equals 3. And I take the dot product of the second row, that equals 2. 0 times x plus 1 times y equals 2. You can see that drops off. So we only have the solution right away because of all these zeros and ones, by the way. So 3, 2 is the solution. And again, it is an ordered pair. And just to show you this, I want to write the augmented. Again, all these different ways of writing it. 1, 0, 0, 1. We can augment it with the line. Just another example. So remember, the augmented matrix has your constants in there. So we want to solve this system of equations. We'll just use our algebra techniques right here. We'll try to eliminate the y's by multiplying the first equation by 2. We can copy this second equation by multiplying by 1, by nothing really, just copying it. Now let's add down. And it looks like 4x minus 4x is 0x plus 0y equals 0. So now our system pretty much... So basically, it relies on our first equation. The reason is, these are the same line. If I had divided this equation by minus 2, then it would be that equation. You can see these equations are just off by a negative. They're the same equation. So the system where you have the same equation, the solution is the line. And of course, we can solve for y, write it as y equals mx plus b. So now what we want to do is we want to write our solution using a parameter. We're going to let t be any real number. We want our solution to be written in terms of t. Our solution is x, y on the line. So since y is in terms of x, let's let x is equal to t. Then we have, using that, y is equal to 2t minus 3. And so x, y can be written as t, 2t minus 3. Or alternatively, x, y in column vector form, x is t, and so y, y is the bottom one. We can even take this a little further. Write this as t plus a zero constant, 2t minus 3. Write it as t, 2t plus the vector 0 minus 3. And then we can factor out that t, 1, 2, 
times a t. So again, this is their column vector form. Easiest to solve. So that's what I'm going to solve for. So just flip popping those. z, 3x plus 2y minus 4. That's our solution. Again, our solution is an ordered triple. We know it's, some, it's points that satisfy that line. So if you see here, z is in terms of two variables. So this tells us we need two parameters. x is equal to s and y is equal to t. Again, I got those because z is in terms of those two. Our solution is, we'll write it like this. Our x is s, our y is t, our z is 3s plus 2t minus 4, just substituting x is in s, y is t. So we write that. 3s plus 2t minus 4, which is, so we can write it pulling those s's out. We can look at it like this, s plus 0t plus 0, 0s zero plus t plus 0, 3s plus 2t minus 4. So we can see our column of s's, which will be the coefficients. 1, 0, 3. A column of t's right here. 0, 1, 2. And our constant. So this is, again, one way to write it. I should say this right here. But if we were just doing x, y, z, this could be represented as s, t. We've, this would be the easier way. And then 3s plus 2t minus 4. Let's do some more examples. So let's write these equations out. How many equations are there? Right, there's two. There's this, there's that, and then this, there's that. So there's two equations. So write them out. 1 x plus 0, y plus 0, z is equal to minus 2, 0, x plus, and then we can clean it up. Okay, so we found x and y, but what about z? Well, if there's no solution, it got dropped, basically, to 0 and to both of them. z can be anything. So we can write our z as t is our parameter t is anything so my, what's my solution again it's okay for some of them to have solutions so x y z is equal to minus 2 7 t alternately let's do it column wise our x y z our x is minus 2 t, which is going to be 0t minus 2, there's no t there, 0t plus 7t plus 0, which is 0, 0, 1 times t plus, and there you have it. Okay, so let's write out these two equations. Again, this, this, this. It's our first one. So, oh, they're both true. So, basically, x and y can be anything. Not the same thing, so two different variables. So, x, y, any solution. Let's write these out. Second equation, dot product, the second one. So it doesn't matter that this is true. This is false. It's always going to be false, which is, we call this a contradiction. So therefore, no solution. Again, this will be our inconsistent. If you remember this, anytime you get one solution or many solutions, it's consistent. Okay, so that's, I'm going to end there for today. 
and on my next video I'll do another example and we will lead into the next section that includes elementary row operations